everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan and I am the host here at Round the Cauldron where we talk theology, philosophy, and everyday life as a modern witch. Today, I wanted to talk about something that I see a lot with people who are new um, to discovering paganism or any other sort of non-Abrahamic faith um, where they really don't know what to do when it comes to comes to terms with um or when it comes to um gods and goddesses and how to go about selecting the right one i guess um so i see this a lot sorry if you can hear my ferret in the background i don't have anywhere else to put her <laughs> um anyways I see this a lot in the community when it comes to people who are just discovering paganism. And it is the idea that you can just pick from a bucket of gods and goddesses that you want to worship or that you want to work with um, or devote to or whatever, what have you. Um, so... The first thing that really needs to be discussed is how you define the gods. So when it comes to worship of gods and goddesses, that can vary based on a lot of things. Um, it's going to vary based on your beliefs. It's going to vary based on your religion or your faith or what spirituality you um, label yourself with, if you label yourself at all. Um, it's going to depend on your culture and sometimes your ethnicity. Um, it's also going to depend on what you really have access to um, in terms of research and resources. Because contrary to what a lot of neo-pagans would have you think, I don't think, I don't believe that you can just pick a goddess, pick a god, and start working with them. I don't think that's how that works. Sure, you can start worshiping whatever god or goddess that you want to, um, but when it comes to working with deities, it's a completely different ballgame, in my opinion. And some people will even say that using the term working with is disrespectful. Um, and that's going to be because they're, they're deities. Like, they are gods and goddesses. You are not necessarily working with them. You might be working for them, or you might be worshipping them. But depending on how you view the gods, that's going to really color your opinion of that statement. Um, because... I believe that the gods are not, like, the gods shouldn't be used as correspondences. That's, and that's something that I see a lot in the neo-pagan community. And, you know, that's fine if that's what you believe and you don't believe that the gods are their own people for lack of a better word, um, their own entities with their own personalities and their own wants and needs and desires and their own emotions. You know, if you don't believe that the gods are their own beings, then it would be okay to view them as correspondences because you don't feel like it would be disrespectful because you don't see them as beings on in their own right. Um, so, the first thing that we need to do when we want to figure out sort of where we go with our worship of the gods is you need to define how you view the gods. Do you view them as archetypes? Do you view them as their own separate entities? Do you view them as, you know, all of them are aspects of one higher power that can't be known? These are all valid beliefs. But I can tell you right now that if you, 
if you view the gods as archetypes, there are some people out there who are not going to be happy with you. Um, those are going to be the the people who do view the gods as their own entities, as their own beings. And it's just a matter of a difference in beliefs at that point. Um, but before you can really move forward in building a relationship with a god or goddess or archetype, however you believe, um, you need to figure out what it is that you believe in terms of the deities. So once you have that situated and you've really figured out where you fall on the spectrum of belief in the gods, then you can start exploring different pantheons. Now, a pantheon is just like a like a group um, that deities are placed in, depending on where they fall in their ancient religions. If it is an ancient religion like um, Hellenism, the ancient Greek deities. So a pantheon is just sort of like a descriptive label. You've got the Greek pantheon, you have the Norse pantheon, um, different branches of the Celtic pantheon. Um, so we say Celtic gods and goddesses, but there are, as I've learned, um, so many different branches under that because you've got Ireland, Scotland, Wales. You, there, there are so many different branches in that that need to be explored if that's the direction that you're going. Now, when you're looking at the pantheons, I don't recommend just flipping through them and saying, oh, this one looks really cool, or this one sounds really cool, I'm going to pick that one. <laughs> Worshipping a god or a goddess, or working with a god or goddess is not like, you know, opening your sock drawer and picking out a pair of socks to wear for the day. That's that's not how it works, not in my opinion. Um, and that can be kind of disrespectful. Um, yeah. Explore the different pantheons that you might be interested in. Um, one of the things that I have done is really meditate on what it is that I feel called to or whom I feel called to. Um, I know this differs from things that I've said in the past because I used to ascribe myself to eclectic Wicca, um, but that's not really the case so much anymore, and I've really grown in my spirituality, but I've done a whole episode. I've, I've done a whole episode on that. I'll link to it um, in the description or in the show notes, depending on how you are consuming this episode. Um, really just meditate on how you feel, where you feel drawn to, and take some other things into consideration. You know, are you part of a culture that has a historic religion? Um, do you live in an area that has a historic religion? Um, is there something that you feel drawn to or a specific a specific god or goddess that you feel drawn to? Um, for the longest time, I was really drawn to Persephone. Um, in the Greek pantheon. I couldn't figure out why. Um, I still feel a sort of connection to her, but it's it doesn't go further than that, further than like an interest. Um, I don't feel like she has an interest in me either. Uh, I just find her story interesting and that's the extent of that. Um, however, recently, uh, within the last month or two, during my meditations, I have been seeing symbols associated with another goddess. And I'm not necessarily ready to full-on say who she is, um, because I need to explore that further within myself and build a relationship with her if that is what she is asking of me. Um, but that is something that needs to be explored. So in researching the pantheons, because you're going to have to research if you don't know where to start, uh, keep that in mind. You know, 
do you feel drawn to a specific god or goddess? Do you feel drawn to a specific area or idea? Um, and use that as your starting point and go from there. Now, I want to mention briefly uh, the idea of closed belief systems. Now, I don't know a lot about this, so I am not speaking from a position of authority on this subject. I'm not even going to go into detail because I don't know a lot about it, and I don't want to give any misinformation or come across in a way that I don't intend. But there are belief systems and religions out there that are considered closed systems. Now, what I understand this to mean is that not anyone can just pick up a book about whatever faith it is that is part of the closed belief system and start practicing that religion. Um, I don't have any examples um, because I couldn't find any specific, specific examples with uh, credible resources and sources that I would be able to explain in this video um, or in this episode. But I do plan on doing another episode about this once I know more. This goes in line with the idea of cultural appropriation. Um, you can't just pick and choose things that you like from very specific closed cultures. That's disrespectful. That is just wrong. You know, don't, don't do it. And if you have questions about whether or not it is something that you can do, then you need to find an authority figure within that belief system and ask them. They are going to be the people that have the answers for you. Not me, not some random person on YouTube, not some random podcast, not some random website. Find an authority figure on the subject, on the belief system, and ask them. That's all I'm going to say about that because. Like I said, I don't know enough about it to speak about it appropriately. So once you have done your research and you have um, chosen a pantheon, for lack of a better word, how do you then go about choosing a deity to worship? You know, with, with faiths like Christianity, it's really easy because there's only one. You don't really have a choice. And with paganism, depending on where you fall in the spectrum of paganism, you can have 10 different options. You can have hundreds of options. And it comes back to understanding the foundations of that belief system. Because, okay, so like within Wicca, Wicca has a god and a goddess, and oftentimes those two deities are given names. Um, this is going to depend on the tradition, the coven, what have you. But if you are an eclectic Wiccan, um, an eclectic Neo-Wiccan or whatever, you're not initiated into a coven, you're by yourself, um, you don't really follow a tradition, you haven't been initiated. Normally I see those Wiccans just picking and choosing a god and goddess and just plopping them into the place of the Wiccan god and the Wiccan goddess. And the deities that they choose don't always fit with what Wicca is known to be. Because within Wicca, the deities in Wicca, the god is considered the horned god, the god of the hunt, um, the god of the wild, he is the consort and child of the goddess, and the goddess within Wicca is a triple goddess, maiden mother crone. But there are some people who just pick a deity to plop in there, like Persephone, for example. Persephone doesn't fit the triple goddess idea at all. You know, she, I mean, yes, yeah, she is a maiden in her form of core, um, I think I said that right. I don't know. But she doesn't fit the aspect of Triple Goddess, in my opinion. I, I don't see it in any of her mythology, 
um, in any of her stories or any of the other stories surrounding the Greek pantheon, I don't see that. Um, so you really need to be mindful of how the gods and goddesses fit in with how you see them and how they fit in with your faith and their historical faith. I think those are all things that need to be taken into consideration. So when it comes to picking a deity to worship, um, I am of the opinion that you don't always get to choose. You might feel drawn to a specific god or goddess, like I felt a connection with Persephone, but that is not the direction that my heart is taking me, and that's not the direction that the gods are taking me at all. And, you know, it you don't always get to choose. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes the gods choose you. Sometimes your faith chooses you. Sometimes your subconscious chooses for you. When it comes to the worship of the gods, I feel like you really need to listen to your gut and what your gut is telling you about which deity you should worship, which deity you're drawn to. Are you being called by a god? Are you being called by a goddess? You know, it's it can get very complicated depending on everything. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's going to depend on so many different variables that there's not really a one size fits all answer. I can give you my opinion and my beliefs, but my beliefs aren't necessarily going to reflect the beliefs of you or the beliefs of your friends or the beliefs of another YouTuber or a podcaster. So let me just tell you what I believe. Because that's, that's going to be the easiest thing for me to explain to you. I believe that you are called by the gods. This might not necessarily be a personal call, I guess. I don't know how to explain that. So, like, you might be called by a specific pantheon because it resonates with you someplace in your heart or past lives or past experiences. Um, it could also be that a specific god or goddess has taken an interest in you for some reason that we will never know. Um, what the gods decide to do is their prerogative and if they choose to call you, then they have their reasons. Um, but I think that before you can actively worship a god or a goddess, you need to build a relationship with them because it's the right thing to do. You know, you become part of each other's lives, for lack of a better word, um, it's, it's a symbiotic relationship. So you have something to gain. They have something to gain sometimes. One of the points of worshiping the gods is building that relationship. And you can't work with the gods without that relationship. Y you can't just call on a god for help if you've never approached them before. If you have never gone to them with an offering, if you have never meditated on them, if you have never um, done any research on them, I, I don't think that's something that you should do. You can't just say, hey, Apollo, I'm, I'm really sick, or my relative is really sick, I need your help and your healing, if you've never approached Apollo before. You know, in my opinion, that's just not something you do. Because you wouldn't go up to some random person on the street and, well, I mean, maybe you might, and say, hey, I need five bucks and you should give me five bucks. With, with no previous relationship, with no explanation, with nothing, you need to approach the gods with reverence 
and with respect because they're deserving of it. And, and then, you know, once, once you build that relationship, there are different things that can happen. You might end up parting ways for one reason or another. You might end up becoming a devotee of the deity um, and taking an oath. That is something that people still do. That is something that sometimes the gods still require of the, of their followers. And that's not up for me to decide. And I can't make that decision for you either if that's something that you feel you are being called to do. That's a very personal decision. And it's not one to be taken lightly. So to end this, I guess, before I keep ranting and losing my train of thought editing for this is going to be a nightmare. Um, <laughs> be respectful when it comes to the gods. And do your research, do your meditations, do whatever it is that that you need to do before you approach the gods. You can't pick the gods like you pick a pair of socks. Till next time, everyone. Bye. Don't forget. If you like my channel and you like my content and like what I have to offer, go ahead and click that subscribe button and make sure you hit the little bell to be notified for whenever I post a new video. Um, I am doing a series called Talk Tarot with me, so make sure you click the bell so you can be notified of when those new videos go out. Try to have them out once, um, once a week, every Friday. And if you want to help support the show, there are plenty of links down in the description where you can do that as well. I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash roundthecauldron, where you can help support the show for as little as a dollar a month and get patron-only perks. I also have a shop at my website, roundthecauldron.com slash shop, where I make crochet items like meditation shawls, crystal bags, um, beanies and scarves. I also have a guided meditation and some tarot readings. So that is another way that you can help support the show. Also, any purchase made in my shop, any purchase, 15% of the proceeds from those purchases are donated to the Johns Hopkins Sjogren's Syndrome Center in honor of my mom, who was diagnosed with Sjogren's in August of 2019. Um, so far, uh, let's see, I started doing it in August. So through August and September, I've been able to gather $6.75 from purchases made in my shop. So I have a goal. I want to reach $100 by the end of 2019 donated to the Sjogren's Syndrome Center. Donations will be made at the end of the year. And um, you can find my shop at roundthecauldron.com slash shop and check it out there. See you later.